Greetings and welcome to On the Table. We are broadcasting on RTM Click and My TV's Brita RTM Channel 123, which is also live streaming on YouTube. I'm your host, Shuhaida Arifin. tonight's episode in the next 30 minutes we'll be embarking on a journey of bridging the digital divide and driving digital transformation in Malaysia and we welcome to the studio Muhammad Akmal Yahya the vice president of IT and digital transformation at Mesat Satellite Systems in Berhad. good to have you here with us in the studio sir Thank you, Shahada. I believe this is your first time in the studio. Yes, correct. But we're having a very uh, fun and interesting topic. We're going to be talking about Masad. Now, the first question I'd like to give you here, maybe you can explain a little bit more about uh, what what are the Masad contribute uh, to Malaysia's national development? I think uh, before we get there, yeah. uh, maybe I can just share briefly the history of Masad. Mm -hmm so that we understand uh, how Miasat grew from a very lean beginning until where we are today. Mm -hmm. So basically, the journey of Miasat started in Malaysia in 1992. That's about 30 years ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's very long. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I joined Miasat in uh, 1995, January 1985. Mm -hmm. That's 29 years ago, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very long time ago. Mm -hmm. So actually, a year before I joined Miasat, uh, Binarian Satellite Systems, which is formally named for Miasat Satellite System, and also Boeing Satellite System, this is a US company, mm -hmm. they signed agreement to, to actually uh, build and launch Miasat first satellite, mm -hmm. which is also Malaysian first satellite. We call it Malaysia East Asia Satellite, mm. and we call it Miasat One. Mm. So basically, uh, not long after the sign-off of that agreement, Boeing started to actually build uh, the satellite in their factory in El Sugando, California. So basically, we uh, Miasat sends in uh, a team of engineers as part of the technology transfer program to get all these engineers learn and participate in the build of Miasat One. Mm. So basically, the engineer has their have actually their hands on building the satellite itself. Mm. So we have pool of engineers there, and then also at the same time we have uh, another team in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. building the Earth Station equipment. So basically, you have two part. One is building the satellite. Mm -hmm. The other one is actually building the Earth or ground station mm -hmm. to control the satellite when it's in orbit. So basically, uh, it takes Boeing. It took Boeing about uh, two years to to complete building the satellite, and then at the same time, also uh, I was actually assigned to look after the the ground segment. So after we complete the testing and and assembling of the uh, satellite equipment in Denver, we brought it out to uh, Langkawi at that time. So we call it Miasat Satellite Control Center. Mm -hmm. It's actually right on the top of Gunung Raya. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you know. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's the station where we are. Mm -hmm. So from there, actually, we once Miasat One launch, we control and we, we manage the satellite right from that facility for over 10 years, actually. Mm -hmm. So 2004, we moved from Langkawi to Cyberjaya, where we are today. So basically, the, the satellite was actually launched in uh, January 1996. And then after that, it's just a series of satellites that we launched. Mm -hmm. So that showed the successful uh, missions where Miasat is actually embarking into. So basically, we have uh, Miasat 2 in 1996, Miasat 3, Miasat 3A, Miasat 3B, Miasat 3D, mm -hmm. the most recent one. Mm -hmm. So we launched Miasat 3D, the most sophisticated satellite, uh, in June 2022. So that, that's a brief history of Miasat. Mm -hmm. Now maybe we come to the contribution. Yeah. Yeah. So in terms of the contribution, basically, uh, I can actually say there are, there are two or three parts of the, the major contribution that Miasat has. First, of course, in terms of uh, creation of job opportunity for Malaysians. Mm. And we are very proud because we are a fully Malaysian company. Mm. 
So basically, uh, with that, we, we train our, our staff, like I mentioned before, in terms of technology transfer. So we, we make sure that our, our employees are actually uh, very well versed in the technology itself and that they keep upgrading their knowledge. So this is uh, part of the human resources development that Miasat is, is doing. So we are very proud of that. Mm. In fact, uh, quite a number of our employees is actually internationally, internationally mm. recognized. So we, we got uh, uh, awards, very prestigious awards, like mm. for example, the APSCC, this is an organization they call Asia Pacific Satellite mm. Communication mm. Council. Mm. So they give uh, some of our employees, uh, they call Young Talent Award. Even our CEO also is actually given uh, you know, some awards mm. in, in Asia Pacific region, like uh, Satellite Executive of the Year. So that is actually a testament of what we as a company contribute to, to Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, besides that, you know, uh, I would say that we contribute a lot in terms of uh, enabling the, enabling the uh, what we call uh, telecommunication industry in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So what that means is basically with MESAT1, we can actually help to propel uh, the development of uh, telecommunication in Malaysia very rapidly. Mm. For example, if you, if you recall back in 1996, there isn't any mobile phone. Mm. And that time, mobile phone is actually uh, pretty new and is in early adoption. Yeah, yeah. You, you seldom see people carry mm -hmm, handphone. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the one that we have, Atur. Mm -hmm, if you remember, mm -hmm. Atur is like a big one. very huge mm -hmm. uh, mo mobile phone, which mm -hmm. is not so mobile, right? They come so, with a, like a backpack-ish that you have to carry them. Exactly, with the battery. And a very bulky <laughs> phone that you have to, it yes. has to be with you. Exactly. <laughs> so, so basically, with, uh, uh, together with the, the development of uh, uh, infrastructure on the mobile communication, Miasat actually come in to help to actually expand that uh, coverage even faster because we have the satellite solution. Mm. With the satellite solution, basically, we can help all these telco company mm. to connect their tower a lot easier, especially in the rural area because you, you don't have to carry fiber or, or lay fiber across the road take a long, long time to actually lay fiber due to the nature of satellite technology where you can actually have a very simple uh, deployment. You can just carry one antenna and associated equipment, plug that in, you're ready to go. Mm. So basically expansion of, of uh, that is uh, pretty quick. Mm. So Miasat plays a very important role in, in ensuring that that development is, is there. Mm. And you understand that basically with uh, availability of the telecommunication infrastructure, the country can grow very rapidly yeah, yeah. So in, across all sectors. Yeah, I think it affects us as RTM too. Exactly. We're having digital Correct. live shows now, like how all of you are watching right yeah. now from a smartphone from yes. RTM Click. So that's how, how the satellite has been helping us, Correct. you know, to, for us to get engaged in, in a more real-time live True. shows and everything. Yeah. So what sets Mesut apart? as a homegrown company? Okay, uh, there are a few things that I can think of. Uh, okay, when we first uh, introduced, maybe this is a good time for me to introduce what mm -hmm. we call Connect Me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if you have heard, mm -hmm. but that's our uh, Miasat brand, uh, which we try to make sure that we are uh, the preferred provider for mm. satellite broadband, mm. which is high-speed satellite broadband. Mm -hmm. So this Connect Me, basically, uh, we use a prepaid, uh, uh, I mean, prepaid uh, sort of uh, approach, mm -hmm. similar to the mobile phone pre pre prepaid. So instead of on the normal uh, telecommunication infrastructure, we do this prepaid through high-speed satellite broadband. So with the target market in, in remote area. So that means uh, basically the, the remote uh, community can actually purchase codes mm. from our distributor mm. and get to our Connect Me uh, broadband uh, hotspots and then get access to the satellite high-speed program. And this is like real high-speed. Mm. They can go up to 200 Mbps. Ooh. 
Ooh, which is maybe really better fast. than your my, wow, my, yeah, yeah, my yeah, internet yeah. at home. <laughs> So it really that uh, it really makes the broadband uh, accessible and affordable to the rural community, and you know with uh, uh, with the access to this internet, there are a lot of things that uh, they can do, especially in terms of e-learning. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, uh, e-commerce. So obviously, those are, are part of the the initiative that we do to actually encourage uh, a rural community to also join you know the digital development that the country is enjoying mm. so basically with e-learning they can all the young generation can learn you know and get better in education and then with e-commerce they can actually sell stuff mm. So there are a lot of stuff in, in the rural area, like you know, all the produce they have. Mm -hmm. Now, Sarah, yeah. when we're talking about the Miasa, the, the internet connection, you know, the the, the digital communication, um, we always um, relate this to the people who lives in the rural area, right? Exactly. So, as far as I'm concerned, to date, um, the latest percentage of the uh, digital coverage is 97 percent uh, across the region in in, mm. in Malaysia. Mm. So, um, how does Miasa contribute to keeping rural Malaysia connected and um, are there are there any applications beyond the country yeah so that's why I'm saying related to this connect me the, the real uh, goal here is basically to to really bridge the digital gap mm. so uh, basically when when uh, we have this satellite solution so we have this capability to to bring this technology to a very remote area. Mm. Because when you mentioned about the internet coverage, mm. right? what stops us is actually this remote area. So it's just too difficult for fiber to get seen. It's just too difficult for the people to build tower, you know, to, to actually service those area. And it's not economical as well. Mm -hmm. For example, if you, you, you want to build a tower, it may cost you millions. And you are serving only maybe uh, 60, 100 people mm. in, within those areas, mm. so it's not economical. Mm. So we, we come in, basically our, our capital to, to provide this is cheap. Mm. So we could just have a simple antenna with some uh, access points. So we allow people to access to this broadband. So that, that uh, we place very important role in that area and our target is really to get to this market to bring them, uh, to present them with all this opportunity to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, uh, there's actually a lot more contribution from the mess up. We're going to be going for a short break and we will be back. And Mr. Akmal will tell us more about the mess after this. Right, now welcome back to On the Table. We're going to proceed with Mr. Akmal. Now, Mr. Akmal, can you tell us more about how does Miasa support the digital inclusion? Uh, again, it's about helping to bridge uh, the digital gap between rural area and also helping the government to actually enhance the digitalization effort. So obviously, this can actually improve the outcome of the society. Mm -hmm. So with better connectivity via ConnectMe platform that I was uh, telling you about. Mm -hmm. So basically, with that, uh, we, we have equal opportunity for all this uh, rural community to actually also access what internet can offer them. Like I mentioned before, in terms of like uh, the most important part is actually e-learning. Mm. So people can learn more. If you remember one time, there's Adi who go and climb the tree just to get access mm, to the mm, internet yeah, for yeah. online class. Mm -hmm. So we try to help uh, this sector of uh, population so that they have equal opportunity similar to us. And then uh, having uh, opportunity to learn and then also to get 
uh, telehealth support. Mm. So maybe for us it's something not critical, but for them sometimes they need to travel miles mm. away in the jungle to actually go and get to see doctors. So what we, we do also actually we partner with our uh, we we partner with uh, like-minded uh, company to actually provide all these services. For example, under telehealth we have Muda Care. And then, in terms of uh, trying to to help the the the, the rural community to actually uh, getting into e-commerce, we are helping them, hand holding them to actually create products, and then get into the e-commerce and mm. sell it off uh, mm. through online. Mm. So all this initiative that we do is actually to try to include them in this uh, digital revolution within mm. our country. Mm. So, so far, we, we've been very successful. Mm. And like telehealth, the target is maybe a million mm. uh, lo uh, I mean, rural population can be helped through this. Mm. And also with Connect Me, now we are currently serving like uh, 4,000 uh, broadband hotspot mm. that easily cover about half a million of uh, rural population mm -hmm. that's quite significant mm -hmm. yeah um, I think we can see how much uh, the people from the rural area are now very much engaged in the digital platform yes. how they are selling you know their, their local products right. especially the small micro entrepreneurs yes. right so um, Masat are part of them who exactly, built yes. the platform Correct. so these are the people who generally your first started um, you know all of you right now who's watching uh, helping you to sell your product to other parts of Malaysia without you going there with lower cost. Um, and apart from that, um, how does Miasat ensure its services remain relevant to evolving needs? Yeah, uh, basically we continuously innovating mm. and adapting our services to meet evolving needs. Okay, so we work to improve our service offering continuously, observe industry uh, trends, and keeping close eye on all the market dynamics mm. to ensure we are always ahead. Yeah. Okay, and then in Malaysia also we leverage our local expert. For example, we have uh, our distribution, a distributor uh, network. They are all local people. Mm. For example, in Sabah and Sarawak, okay, they are, they are actually staying in, in all this rural area and they come in becoming the installer for our distributor. So we, they know exactly the local culture. Mm. So that really helps us to stay ahead, you know, and, and making sure that we are leading uh, along this uh, yeah. journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what are the, the broader social impact? The one that is really obvious, the one that you have mentioned just now, mm. the e-commerce, the mm. connection, you know, the communication yeah. between people from one state to another. But what are the, you know, bigger social impact that this message has on the people? I think again, uh, it's pretty clear, you know, with better education, mm. okay, better education means uh, the young generation can actually help propel their, uh, their family to mm. a better position. Mm. And then again, with the e-commerce, basically, you can do business. Again, you can, with the business, you can actually elevate your, elevate your family status. You know, all those are a very major part of uh, what we are trying to do. So I think uh, even that also, like for example, in, in broader, uh, wider angle. So if you look at our neighboring countries, mm. so they are, they are actually uh, suffering from the same problem that we are suffering. So practically whatever uh, approach that workable here, we can actually duplicate that to neighboring countries like, uh, you know, uh, Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, Thailand, Thailand, all that, right? Mm. So, so that, that's... Uh, Mm. something that we look at. But um, when there's advantages, it also comes with the disadvantages. Mm -hmm. When people have um, so many literacy, digital literacy, mm. people are also exposed to some sort of cyber crimes, yes. you know, like scamming. Right. I know I know, Miasa is the one who is responsible to provide the platform to mm. bridge the, the, the digital gap. Mm. However, this opens a new door for different types of crimes. Yeah. So do Miasa has any, you know, perhaps some guidelines uh, to ensure that um, with with the the work of broadening the digital infrastructure at the same time safeguarding the people who benefits from this digital uh, that's a very good question right. 
So, so basically, like I mentioned, it's not just about uh, providing the, right. the infrastructure mm -hmm. because that's just half, uh, half of the, the, the equation, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, it's also how do you use it and then how you actually uh, uh, take advantage of the solution and also how do you protect yourself. Right. So that's, that's the reason, among others, why we are collaborating with partners, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. like... Uh, Pasal 365. Right. So, besides training them on creating products, mm -mm. Uh, selling products on on digital platform, they are also helping the locals to on the awareness of all this scam. You right. know all the all the dangerous things right. that are coming mm -hmm. together with all these good things that we have mm. uh, on the internet. Mm. Has Misa ever been working with you know our ministry, digital ministry, and uh, you know government agencies? Of course, we, we actually support uh, government agencies like mm. uh, Ministry of Education, mm. you know, so Orang Asli. Mm -hmm. So all those are part of our bread and butter as well in terms of getting the, the technology to them and, you know, mutually uh, work to improve the communication infrastructure to, to all these areas. Mm. In fact, we're also working with, uh, because of we are local, uh, we are 100% Malaysian, uh, company and also with Malaysian workforce. So basically we have advantage to actually work together with the government critical mm. entity, you know, mm -hmm. for example, Ministry of Defence mm. or uh, Malaysian Armed Force. So all those, uh, we have the opportunity to work together with them to improve their secured communication. Mm. So who else to, to trust mm. rather than us, which is actually a Malaysian company, which is 100% can be controlled by the government. Right. Right. So, so basically, we do we do have those uh, setups. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's it's a good thing to hear this that we have um, you know um, a crucial prospect of the country building uh, the, the infrastructure for the digital that is uh, handled by the homegrown people. It's a homegrown company. Um, uh, you know, this is something that will definitely help our Malaysians yep. uh, perhaps to study more when it comes to digital and we're going to have a surplus of uh, perhaps pool of talents when we have our own company here. Uh, so, um, what is MESAT's role in developing future technology leaders? Like I mentioned here, yeah. when we have supply yeah. And there's going to be demand. Yeah. So we have our supplier, which is the Masat. It's a homegrown company. Mm -hmm. So um, what are Masat's uh, role in developing future technology leaders for the advancements of Malaysia's mm -hmm. satellite sector? Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, basically, uh, Masat takes pride mm. in developing local talents, mm. where many of our employees actually being internationally recognized. Yeah. So basically, that alone is actually testament uh, that these people are actually our homegrown talents that will help uh, Malaysia to actually propel further in a satellite communication uh, sector. So basically, these are the future leaders for us, yeah. right? And then with rapid development in telecommunication industry, and y you see like uh, when we talk about telecommunication, the, the development is very, very rapid. Mm. So maybe this year you learn something, next year it's already something else. Yeah. So your the engineer has to be on their toes yeah. all the time to actually catch up with all this uh, technology. So what we do is actually we, we keep a challenge all these engineers and then uh, bring them with the latest technology, explore, expose them to the, the latest technology and then train them, you know, and equip them with tools that they need so that, you know, they, they, can, they can grow as well as we can actually build and, and uh, mold them to become future uh, technology leader. Mm -hmm. um now, as we're talking about about this, um, you know, the role that Mesa plays to build more future young leaders, um, what are the education background that is needed for the students out there? Now, Ms. Takma, you have been in the industry. Yeah. You know better. What are the qualifications that is needed for the students out there if they, mm. if they wish to pursue the education, you know, in satellite, in digital, in communication? Yeah. Okay. Uh uh, basically, like I mentioned previously as well, okay, uh, we, we are in high-tech industry. Mm. 
So basically, a lot of our employees are professional and high skill uh, professionals. Mm. So that range from engineers, mm. uh, technicians. Mm. You know, you, we have lawyers, we have accountants. So all these are professional field. So again, uh, if you are interested specifically mm. in satellite technology, mm -hmm. which is technical, mm. so mostly we hired like. Uh, uh, engineering degrees, mm. either in uh, electrical engineering, mm. aerospace engineering, uh, computer engineering. Mm. So, among others are those, you know. But basically, we do have also like uh, computer information technology. For example, in my department, we have uh, we call it ITDT, mm. the information technology and digital transformation. So what they does, what they do is basically make making sure the IT infrastructure infrastructure is every all the time running good, as well as like DT team, they are actually trying to uh, help to actually make people more efficient mm. by automation. Mm -hmm. So basically, that is also another part of uh, you know education that maybe help uh, some of the, our young. Uh, people to actually get into so that they can come into this uh, industry. Right, because um, I think we have so many passionate students out there, but m maybe or perhaps they, they just don't know which field they should go into if they're very much interested with the satellite. Yes. You know, probably they're growing up looking at Elon Musk, you yeah. know, doing all these space <laughs> things. So Mr. Akmal has to wrap it up for you. What are the things that you need in order for you to be able to work or get a job done in the satellite industry, digitali digitalization and communication? Uh, thank you, Mr. Akmal, for... for Can I have for some last words? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. So, so basically, uh, like what you mentioned yeah. before in terms of uh, security and safety on the, on the internet, so on, on Miasat behalf, right, on behalf of Miasat, uh, basically, we have actually worked very, very hard to provide this infrastructure mm -hmm. or this telecommunic telecommunication infrastructure to almost all Malaysians. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically, uh, like anything else in life, okay, we we always presented with choices mm. between good and bad, mm. you know, uh, right and wrong, and then uh, truth and falsehood. So basically, what I, I personally uh, humbly would like to urge is basically for all Malaysians to actually use this infrastructure yeah. in the right way. Yeah. Okay, be so responsible, that, yes, be correctly. mindful. Right. Do not put the blame on other people because we have to be responsible right. too because we are using that uh, you know, infrastructure and facilities. Yeah, thank you, so Mr. Akmal. That's the only time that we have at the moment. Um, yeah, I uh, thank you for watching uh, on the table. We've been talking to Muhammad Akmal Yahya, the Vice President of IT and Digital Transformation, Miasat Satellite Systems, in Denver A repeat of this episode's broadcast can be viewed again at the same time tomorrow and subsequent days on both RTM Click and My TV's Brita RTM channel, which is also live streaming on YouTube. Till next Thursday, where we'll discuss on another topic of interest. I'm Shuhaida Arifin, signing off.